welcome to another TV edition of Get Real. I'm Hot Toddy, and I see by my watch, <laughs> you're right on time. Yes, and Didi Duty. You like that? I got one of the, the Time Bubble Tour watches. I got it for e on eBay for 20 bucks. Somebody had bought up a, like a bunch of them, and we're selling them like for 20 bucks a pop. And I, I couldn't pass that up. I absolutely had to get one because they were like 75 bucks when they were on the actual tour. So I managed to snag one. And I got this really cool like lanyard keychain thing. So if I actually want to be that guy wearing a pocket watch, I can do so with this. And uh, oh, if you're, you're digging the hoodie, you like the hoodie. Yeah, this is new too. This was a Christmas gift from my parents because of my undying love for Mystery Science Theater 3000. And of course, I'm wearing the, the King of King of Vision glasses for the for the. 3D adventure that was uh, The Mask. That's right, but we're going to get into all of that. Of course, this is probably, well, for now, anyway, we'll, we'll get back to it eventually when, when and if the show comes back for another season, but this is the final TV edition episode of Get Real uh, based on the new season of Mystery Science Theater 3000. I know it's been a while. The season wrapped up two months ago, uh, but I've been busy and, and I haven't had a whole lot of time to watch all the episodes, but I got all caught up, I finished them, and now I am ready to do uh, the review for the last few episodes. And really this episode is going to be based around not just the, the last four episodes of the season, but the season as a whole, because I wanna talk about the, the whole thing and see where we're gonna go uh, for season 14 when and if uh, it, it happens, which I'm sure it probably will. Uh, there's no signs that says it won't. Uh, they they seem to be doing just fine, and everybody was extremely optimistic about the season. So I, I'd say we're, we're we're probably in the clear in terms of whether or not the show is going to continue. And I'm going to take oh gosh, I'm going to take these off for a minute, but I just did it. Oh, it's killing my eyes. Okay, I'm blind. I'm Crow! blind. Crow's blind. Blind. Anyway, so let's get into talking about the last few episodes of the season. Uh, when I last left you, last time we did a TV edition of Get Real, talking about Mystery Science, uh, it was in September, and there have been four episodes since September. It was the last four episodes. The Shape of Things to Come, The Mask, 3D, The Bubble, and of course, The Christmas Dragon. Uh, all were really good episodes. Um, like I said, this is kind of be kind of like an overall thing for the whole season, uh, but I do want to talk about each episode but I'm, I want to focus mainly on the mask and the Christmas dragon. We're going to go over the other two just kind of quickly. Of course, that was The Shape of Things to Come by H.G. Wells. Uh, this movie was, it was a slog to get through. I'm not going to lie. Even the great Jack Palance couldn't save this film. That was a lot to get through. But the jokes were, but the jokes were sturdy. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the episode. I thought it was super funny. I thought it was super well done. You know, another home run for, for season 13. And uh, the bubble, here's the thing about the bubble. The bubble was a great episode all around. Why? Because it was one of those episodes where the movie was actually pretty good. That's the thing about Mystery Science is like they had a lot of, they did a lot of movies on that show from the very beginning to where we are now that were actually fun to watch. Even some of the, the, the worst of the worst films ever that they did, like Monster Go-Go, Mano's Hands of Fate, even those movies became fun to watch. And uh, we, we actually did Monster Go-Go on the Smoking Hot Toddcast Live last year. So, I mean, it, it, it just goes to show that not all bad movies are unwatchable. And The Bubble was a great example of that. It was, it was a mystery, suspense, thriller. It was like the perfect, like if they wanted to do a Twilight Zone movie just on like one story, because they the, the actual Twilight Zone movie, they, they chopped it up into different stories. If they wanted to just do one sort of like a, a tip Tales from the Crypt, that would have been another good one, Tales from the Crypt. Uh, this would have been a good movie for that, the bubble. Like you're in this dome and you just don't know what's going to happen. So the movie, that movie was actually very good. I enjoyed that life and that was a B movie. I enjoyed it. I also enjoyed uh, seeing the cameo by the uh, choir director from Mayberry on the Andy Griffith Show. Uh, that was really cool. He was in it for just a second, but that, that, I enjoyed that a lot. And the jokes were solid in that as well. I really enjoyed the episode all around. Those were two great solid, not super memorable episodes of the show, um, but like, you know, solid ones that, that are always good. Kind of like, I, I always look at episodes like those two, like Future War 
or the blood waters of dr z movies like that which were you know still memorable episodes you you know the episodes you know that they're there and you know that they're funny but they're not like mind they're not like a manos episode they're not like a space mutiny they're not anything like that it's just they're good solid episodes and that's you need that to round out the season because we had some solid memorable ones you know like munchy and beyond Atlantis, where we first introduced Emily onto the, the simulator of love. And of course, the mask and the, the Christmas dragon. Of course, those were very memorable episodes as well. So you have tons of memorable ones. So you need some of the more plain Jane, kind of just normal down to earth episodes to kind of reel it all in and make it interesting and fun. And that's what that episode was. That's what those two episodes were. Uh, were just good, clean, fun episodes to put in there. But now let's move on to the two probably the two best episodes of this of of this last part of the season we'll begin with the mask i'm gonna put the glasses back on in 3d you are a sad strange little man uh actually this was out of all the episodes this is one i i watched this one the very last this was the last one that i watched uh, i don't know I, mainly because for me it was like ah, i gotta watch an episode in 3d that's a lot of work so I gotta, i'll dig out the glasses later i got the glasses like everybody else uh but i was like I, I, i'll get to it later and I ended up watching all the other episodes uh again i, I really enjoyed that movie the, the, these movies well, not so much the next one we're going to talk about, but this movie I really enjoyed too. It was suspenseful. This movie gave me super, super amounts of anxiety. And if a movie can do that, it's clearly doing something right. And they did. This movie, I was just like, oh God, oh God. You remember, you remember the, the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies when there was that montage of uh, Ray Dennis Steckler's character going through all this like, whole, you know, craziness when, when he murdered that girl when he first got hypnotized and Servo says, I mean it, Mike, I, I, I think I'm freaking out. <laughs> And, and several just had a full-on freak out in, the, in that part of the episode. That was me through most of this movie. And I loved it. I was fully okay with it because, of course, I had the glasses on. So not only was I freaking out, but I was freaking out in 3D. So, I mean, the movie was just all around super entertaining. I loved that. Uh, do I love it as much as the, the other mask, the mask that I grew up with, Jim Carrey's mask? Actually, if you look right back there, let's see, right there he is. I have a mask action figure right under the Mystery Science Theater 3000 memorial I have back here. So it's kind of ironic that, that he would be there. But yeah, but that, I no. What? You know, I liked Jim Carrey's mask better. Uh, but this was, a, this was a solid film and I, I enjoyed it. And the riffs were on fire. I think this and Munchie are the standout episodes for Jonah and his crew. Very funny episodes. This one was the was I don't this might even surpass Munchie. Uh, Munchie again was because it was just such a memorable episode because the movie was so bad. It was just such a terrible, terrible film uh, that you know it was hard. It was hard enough for them to get through it, uh, making fun of it, and uh, it was hard for us to just get through watching it. So. So it was it was kind of a slog to get through. It was it was hard to get through. The mask wasn't hard to get through, but there were so many great riffable moments. I mean, the fact that this whole movie revolves around this mask that that looks like trash. It looks like a three year old made it, and for some reason, that's the main scary MacGuffin of the whole film. It just it made me it, that really entertained me. But then when you put it on, you, there's this cosmic world that this guy went through. Uh, you know, it was it was really, really entertaining, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And like I said, the riffs were top-notch. He had no idea what he was doing when he stole the mask. He stole it? That and the Constitution. Hey, big boy, looking for a mask? I'm right here on the table. Maybe I got what you need. On a scale of 1 to 50, which shade of gray is this? Uh, and I love the fact that they, they dressed up in Halloween costumes. Actually, I want to mention this. The fact that they did a Halloween episode of the show really goes above and beyond because they they never done a Halloween episode. They have done Christmas episodes for every iteration of of the show. Of course, you had Santa Claus Conquers the Martians when Joel was on. You had Santa Claus when Mike was on. Uh, during the Netflix era, you had the Christmas that almost wasn't. And then, of course, now on the Gizmoplex, we have the Christmas Dragon. So they've had done plenty of Christmas episodes, but they'd never done a specific Halloween episode, even though I guess every episode is technically, almost every episode is technically a Halloween episode because they watch a lot of old cheesy horror movies. 
uh, but they never did one that had a specific Halloween theme for the show. So it really meant a lot that they did that because, you know, Mystery Science is, is basically a variety show. And every variety show, almost every variety show, does a Halloween and Christmas episode, always. We do it on the Smoking Hot Toddcast, uh, and we do it on on the smell on Smells Like 90s Rock, the Toddcast sister show, and on the Toddcast other sister shows, we do Halloween and Christmas episodes of all of them. This show, Get Real, uh, Played Out, Stump Hot Toddy, Just the Dumbest. We do Christmas and, ha- and Halloween theme. We take both holidays because they are... Every holiday is, is celebrated, but in terms of, rec- of, of recognition, of decorations, of getting exciting and excited and pumped up and, and make something out of it, Halloween and Christmas is it, of course, obviously. And so a lot of people, you know, a lot of shows will do Christmas episodes, but hardly Halloween. So it really meant a lot to me that they did a Halloween themed episode. Uh, it was just cool to see. I really thought that was really neat and, and uh, really awesome that they did that. And again, they picked a great movie for it. The Mask 3D was the perfect flick. Uh, for a movie like this, because not only is it a horror movie, it again, it made me freak out. I mean it, Mike. It, 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 I think I'm freaking out. It may, I'm sure it probably made some people. They may not admit it because they don't want to admit that a B movie got to them. But this movie got to me. It wasn't. It didn't scare me. It just it gave me. I, I already have anxiety problems. So whenever he put the mask on and went through all of that, I and with 3D glasses too, I really made me anxious and I loved it. So I'm glad that they did that. Uh, but no, that 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 episode was great. So uh, high marks for the mask 3D. Really enjoyed that. Happy Halloween, everybody! <laughs> Okay. I'm, oh God, I'm not putting the glasses on anymore. <laughs> it's just killing my eyes with the ring light when I every time I come out of it. Let me. Oh God. Surprise, motherfucker. Let's move on now to the Christmas Dragon, which was the season finale. Um, another solid episode. This episode and and the mask both. I had some major laugh out loud moments. I didn't mention that in the mask, but I'll mention it for both here. Both of them made me cackle a few times. The, like I said, the riffs were just so solid in both episodes. Uh, and then the Christmas Dragon, though, God, they started hitting it out of the park as soon as they got started. Mm. Can you smell that? But the rock is cooking. But where are yours? We're Jewish. Houdini! It was just such, there's so many great riffs. Now, unlike the mask and the bubble, uh, the Christmas Dragon is not a movie that I'll be revisiting anytime soon. Uh, that movie was uh, not, it was trash. It was trash. Whose bright idea was it to go, you know what? You know, the Hobbit movies, because this movie came out in 2014, the Hobbit movies have done surprisingly very well. Uh, and of course, they come from an already huge franchise, Lord of the Rings. What do you say we take that franchise and put a Christmas theme in it? What would that look like? Well, hopefully, if in in the right hands, it wouldn't look like the Christmas dragon. Oh my God. But uh, hopefully in the right hands, it would look really neat and it would be fun for for everyone to see. Uh, But in this case, it was not. This movie was, like I said, trash. Uh, I did not enjoy this film at all, Uh, but the riffs were solid. And, And it even, I think it even overshadows the mask a little bit more. And we're going to get into that here in a little bit, but the the for the reason why, and it's a reason we we've, we've talked about in previous episodes. But I want to I want to make it super clear uh, before we we wrap up our discussions on season thirteen. Um, but it just it was so funny, and and the sketches were on point. I love I love the fact that each set of hosts got to do their own time in the theater in that episode. It was Emily, then Joel, then Jonah, and then I, I, I toyed with the idea in my brain. I said, like, wouldn't it be neat if they're, if they're doing all three of these, and then right before the show ends, they do just the hosts themselves in the theater? That'd be really cool to see. And then they did it. They did it. Joel, Emily, and Jonah together, the three of them in the theater watching the film. That meant a lot to me. That was really cool. I thought that was really interesting and fun. If only Mike. If Mike would just agree to come back and do just do one episode, one, and do something like that with them, 
I think all of our hearts would melt. I think we all, our, our heads would explode, our hearts would melt, we'd be dead. We'd be gone, bury us, it's over, we're done with, we can't take it anymore because all the glorious things that could ever happen on Mystery Science Theater has happened. I think that would exist, would, we would just die. We would just die. Oh, Frank. Yes? This is it. I'm dead. Because it is that exciting and that it was that cool. So I love that and I love the fact that, you know, it, they, the season left was left on the cliffhanger. What's going to happen? According to the end of the episode, spoilers, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, Joel, Jonah, and Emily managed to get out of Kinga's grasp, get into the time machine thing, and go back in time to 1991, which is when Joel would have been actually on the Satellite of Love in the original Mystery Science Theater. So what's going to happen? Who knows? Uh, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to happen uh, after that. And that dr leads me in to the final part of this, in which I discuss what's in store next for Mystery Science Theater. I, I certainly hope there's a season 14. Uh, there's been no real discussion as, as I'm recording this or and as the episode comes out. I don't, I don't know when exactly this episode is coming out, but as I'm recording this, there's been no talk of season 14. But everybody seems to be pretty confident that there will be, especially that since everything is on the Gizmoplex now and not through any kind of you know network or streaming service, it's all up to them. So if they want to do it, if they can do it, they will do it. It's not really so much up to anybody. So, you know, keep your ear to the ground. If you if we hear about another Kickstarter, please contribute to it. I know, you know, listen, I'm still unemployed, so I know that it is difficult for maybe some of you to to donate money but we've got to keep this show on the air they did such a great job and each, each episode got better and better and it would just be a shame to lose to lose steam now but we when 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 they were on netflix you could kind of tell that there, there was shaky ground because netflix didn't really advertise them a whole lot and then the fact that their second seat the 12th season was a was a one basically one giant episode uh, i think the writing was already kind of on the wall at that point but the fact that they're able to come back and do their own thing now i think it's pointing in the right direction that we will get a season 14 maybe another tour i would love for them to go back on tour because that's you know that's where we first met emily and crew was on the tour and that's when i learned that this person this group not just not just emily herself but this group is highly talented and deserves a spot on mystery science theater and that's my overall remarks here if 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 there was any advice if somebody said what, what's your advice for for joel and the gang for next season more emily i want more emily i want more kelsey i want more connor i want more yvonne that team like i said they remind me so much of joel and his crew and mike and his crew in the original days they're just so good they have so much talent in that group that it's it's insane um and and i think the reason why and and I, i'm a little bit biased because you know I, I did get to speak with emily and kelsey back in the summer thank you thank you but but not just that no they really are they become my favorites of this season because they remind me of classic mystery science Again, no, no, no slight against Jonah and Baron and Hampton or or Felicia and and Patton, but the thing about Mystery Science Theater is it's again I, we've discussed this like I said in previous episodes, but that show is very much like Star Wars. You know what I mean? And that Star Wars when it first came out, we didn't really know anybody. The we knew if if you were a you know if you if you were older. And you'd been to the, you know, you'd seen films like in the 50s or you know, 40s. You might know who Alec Guinness was, but he was kind of older at that point, so maybe you didn't. And the only person that might look familiar at that time was Harrison Ford because he'd been in like a couple movies before that. One of them being American Graffiti, where he did some, uh, you know, a lot of screen time and that. So you might know who Harrison Ford was, but you didn't know anybody else. You didn't know a single other person, or maybe Peter Cushing. He was a popular horror actor, but if you weren't a big horror person, you may not even known who he was. So it was it was like a cast of of new people, and you're like, okay, let's let's watch this movie. Let's see what they can do. And not only did you love the movie, but you fell in love with the actors and actresses in the film series. And so that's why their names are 
in gold now. You know, that's why we look back on on the career, not just the career of Carrie Fisher, what she had, but the fact that she was Princess Leia, the fact that she had that huge major role that just, you know, catapulted her to stardom. We love that. And that's the way it is about Mystery Science as well. When Mystery Science started, you didn't know anybody on that show. The only person that might have looked slightly familiar was Joel because he was a stand-up comedian. So if you'd caught his stand-up comedy on, on Saturday Night Live or on David Letterman, you might know who Joel was, but there's a good chance you didn't. And you probably and you probably didn't know anybody else on the show. So you say, okay, I want to watch this. I'm going to give it a shot. And then not only did you fall in love with the show, but you fell in love with the actors and the actresses. You fell in love with everybody on that show. And that's what it is with Emily and her crew. The difference, that's the difference between Emily and Jonah. Emily and her crew, uh, as opposed to Jonah and his crews, Emily and her people, we didn't know. We, we didn't know them until this tour, uh, the time, you know, time bubble tour and, and the season 13. That's when we got to know them and got to know their skills and their talent. With Jonah and his crew, I've said this before, it's, it's like celebrities doing cosplay. It's like celebrities doing Mystery Science Theater. And on one hand, that's refreshing. It's cool to see people that are stars doing the show that you grew up watching and loving because, you know, back then it was, there was no social media or anything. It was barely any internet. So you, if you were like me, you thought nobody else in the world knew about this show except you. You thought this was your show. You felt like it was made for you because you didn't talk about it to, with anybody else. And then to find out that Patton Oswalt, one of the funniest and most talented comedians of our time, was not only a huge fan, but got cast onto the new version of it. That's huge. That's really cool. And, and that's the thing. It's like, I knew who Patton was. I knew who Felicia was. I knew who Jonah was. I knew who Baron was. I didn't know who Hampton was, but he became a favorite as well. But that's the thing. It's like, I knew all these people that were coming on to do the new show. And while I loved them, and while I while I love what they did on the show, it it's it feels like fans of the show doing the show, and it kind of takes you out of the real, you know, the fun of the show. I almost said reality, but come on, reality. But I mean, you, you know what I mean. It kind of takes the fun out of it when you when you're watching it and you're like, it's they're just kind of they're kind of imitating what how I imitated the show. You know, when I would do it in my room with fake puppets of, of the characters. That's kind of how it felt. Um, but they're still great. Again, no slight against them. Love them, and I love everything that they've done for the show, and I hope they'll be a part of it too. But the reason why I say more Emily and her crew is because it gives me the warm, happy feels. It, it takes, it transports me back to the 90s when I was watching that original crew doing the show. You know, because again, whenever they changed cast members, it was always somebody you didn't know. And then they just fit right in. They just came in and stole the show. Bill Corbett is a great example of that. Everybody, I'm sure, was like, this guy's going to be Crow. He's going to be one of the new bad guys. What? What is this? And then he just slipped right in. And he's like, this, this guy's family. I mean, he's family. And that's Emily. She's fam. Kelsey is fam. Connor is fam. Yvonne is That's family. Who am I? What am I? Fam, okay? Thanks, Captain Obvious. And, and I, I love them. And they're so extremely talented. So I, I want more Emily. I want more Kelsey, Connor, and Yvonne. Because that crew, in my opinion, is the standout crew of season 13. Jonah was great. All of them were great as well. But Emily and them, they stood out above the rest, in my opinion. I think they really, really took it above and beyond. And you can tell that the writing overall, even with both Jonah's crew and Emily's crew, has uh, significantly improved. It was a little rocky in the Netflix era. Uh, like I said, like I, I think I said this in the first uh, TV edition I did about this. You know, it was, they were like rapid fire jokes. It, they were like, see, let's see how many jokes we can do in a minute. And it, it, you didn't have enough time to react to what they were saying. This time, this season, you had time, it, it, it leveled out. And, that, and, that, and on, that really reminded me of classic mystery science with both teams and Joel's team too. Uh, it leveled out and you had time to react to the joke and laugh and carry on and then move on to the next thing. So every, all the arrows are pointing in the positive direction here. All the arrows are pointing in the right direction uh, for where the show needs to go next. And I, I, I'm really excited for them. And I hope that season 14 happens. And I hope this is just as successful, if not more, than season 13. 
Uh, but yeah, so that's where we are. That's kind of where I have to leave you now because we don't really know anything else. Hopefully our rewards will get here soon. I know they've had a lot of awful delays with COVID and everything like that. That is not their fault in the least. I know they keep apologizing in emails. If anybody on that team sees this video, we are with you. It is not your fault. You keep doing you and we will get our stuff when we get our stuff. We are patient. That's the thing about our fandom is we are patient people. We waited almost 20 years for the show to come back and we got it back and here we are. We're doing great. We're doing swell. So take your time. We'll get the rewards when we get the rewards. But yeah, here's to season 14 and congratulations you guys on Mystery Science Theater with season 13. I can't wait to see what you do next. And look at that. We're out of time. <laughs> My cat thinks I'm cool.